Come on, children. Oh, okay. We are recording. We're live. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. College Park. College Park. <laughs> College Park is where it all goes down. Yes. Network play in every part of town. College Park is Georgia's front door and College Park we've got so much in store. What's going on children? What is going on honey? I'm coming to y'all this evening because I am leaving the Donut Factory chat. It's been a long day but it wasn't necessarily uh, long for the wrong reasons okay. We were very quiet today uh, we're in a slow period right now, so that's okay. And so, you know, it's just the day. Was, oh, honey, uh -uh, what are y'all doing? Uh, the day was just long, okay? So I am ready to go get out of this damn monkey suit, honey, and just relax and carry it on, right? And it is my Friday, so uh, I got a couple of things that I need to do this weekend as far as the Car Chronicles are concerned, because I got a couple of things I want to share with you guys uh, over the weekend. That I'm going to make my business to do. Okay. Uh, yes, God. I've got to make it my business to do these things. Because it is, I believe, important for um, for us. In fact, what it, what my my projects and stuff for, for the weekend uh, leads us to, the, to this discussion now as I drive home. So y'all bear with me. If you can hang with me through the live, that's fine because I know it's late. Uh, for those of you who are joining me in the replay or whatever, and you're catching at a decent time, thank you. Uh, but for those of you who are right here with me live, and you're going to stay with me, honey, okay, I appreciate you because I, I really, really do. But here's the question that I want to ask you guys. Uh, what is it that you want your legacy to be? Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? Okay. And I ask this question because I'm thinking, um, it just dawned on me today, because I have not been paying attention to the date, but um, election day is Tuesday, November 5th. That day also happens to be my mother's angel day, so this is going to be three years for my mom, okay, and I, I just do not believe that it is three years already because it still feels like it is just yesterday. Okay, in fact, it's still so, still so surreal to me. But one of the things that I teach all of my kids, my nieces and nephews, those who are in my company, uh, my good, 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 good sister friend, honey, Miss Helena Hologram, she passed on right after my mom. So it'll be three years for her in a couple of weeks, uh, next month rather, because she died in um, December. And we always ask this question, what did you do with your dash? And for those of you who don't know what that means, the most important piece of information on your obituary is not your birth date, or your death date. It is that dash in between. So what did you do with your dash? It becomes the question. And so to, to facilitate the question comes a sub-question or the subtext. Honey. What do you want your legacy to be? Okay? Oftentimes, you know, I don't think many of us really think about that. You know what I mean? Unless, you know, except for those who are very vain and pompous and all of that kind of jazz, you know, we are, uh, you know, we, we criticize them and carry it on and we go through all the motions and the notions and things. But the question here, let me take the road to what I jazz a bit because I need a little bit of air. But the question is, what do you want your legacy to be? How, how is it that the people are going to talk about you? Okay. What is going to be said 100 years from today? Ooh. Imagine that. Imagine that. Okay. What is it? What's going to be said about you 100 years from today? Okay. 
considering that you're not here. Now I'm 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 going to be grand to say that I might be here, <laughs> okay? Because I the Lord and I have already discussed this, and I I explained. I said, listen now, I need to be here to celebrate my 125th birthday, which would be March 4th, 2095, okay? Uh, and I want to celebrate the way that I do all month long from February 28th to April 2nd in my right mind honey, with all of my faculties in place okay and I'm able to do what I do okay and celebrate and then on April 2nd 2095 we can then renegotiate the terms okay if he's ready for me to come home okay if if we you know we got some some other things that he needs for me to do, okay, you know we can renegotiate the terms. But I'm gonna be here till then, okay. But for those who who may not be as zealous as I am, okay, for those who may be overzealous, you know, a little bit more than me, and say, you know, I'm living forever, okay, uh, in the physical that is. What do you want your legacy to say? For those of you who say, okay, you know what? Whenever I go, I go, honey. That's going to be it for me because I'm tired of the world and blah, 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 blah. What do you want to have said about you? What contributions are you giving to this world to make it better? For those of you who are parents, not only are your children your legacy, but what have you instilled in them? What have you done that's going to have the world talk about you and not just your children? You know what I mean? Because your children are going to end up having their own lives and creating their own legacy. Now, they will be an extension of you, yes. Always be an extension of you. And their success, you know, uh, indirectly becomes your success because, of course, without you, they would not be here, right? And et cetera, et cetera. And then the values are things that you have instilled into your children. You know, so they will carry on, carry on your legacy. But what will your legacy be? Oh, dear God, they're pushing the car. Oh, oh, pumpkins. Damn. They, oh, honey, I've been there, done that, and that is nowhere near fun. They done ran out of gas and tried to get over here to the gas station. Jesus, give them strength, honey. Um, so, what is it? You know, how do you want to be... What, you know, how do you wish to be revered? You know, are you putting anything in place right now? You know, and it's never too late. That, that's that, And I think that's one of the other things about this conversation that I want to make clear. It is never too late, okay, to, to be able to say, hey, you know what? I was, I was going down this direction. I can always change directions and go a, a different way or whatever. And then, you know, have some good things said about me. Does your bad outweigh your good? Or does your good outweigh your bad? Are, are you equally yoked or whatever? What is that for you? How does it look? Okay. How does all that look for you? How does all that, you know, play into the hands of everything? You know what I mean? Uh... How will you design your legacy? Oh, that's kind of cute. How will you design it? Okay. What are you putting in place to do this? And it's real easy for those who are entertainers and sports stars and, you know, those who got the real big stuff, you know. Um, you know, they have, they got them, you know, you, you, you know this is because they make this kind of money and, you know, they live in that kind of house and blah, 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 blah. We look at their philanthropy of what they've done, you know, for the for the community and this, you know, and all of that. So we get to see what their progress has become or, or whatever, right? But for those of us who don't have the luxury of being celebrities like that or don't have the luxury of, you know, having the press follow you and this, that, and the other and, and keep tabs, what are you doing that's going to give you that spark? That's going to make the history book say, you know what, this was a good person. This was a good man. You know, this was a good woman. Okay. This was a good non-binary individual, honey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what would your legacy say about you, honey? What is it that you're doing? What are your passions for the world? 
I mean, you know, while you're here, what are some of the things that you like to do? Good, bad, or indifferent. Because of here, now let's look at that now. And I'm saying that like that because oftentimes, see, we get caught up. Uh, okay, we get caught up in wanting our legacy to be something that is not going to necessarily bring about shame. Okay? And again, that there becomes in the eye of the beholder because let's take those who are into the porn industry and adult industry or whatever. Honey, there's a lot of people honey, who have made a complete business out of it. And so their business is sex. Their business is the joy of pleasure. You know what I mean? So if that there is their business, then honey, oh shit, I knew there was somebody on my side. I couldn't see. You in my blind spot, girl. Um... Uh, so, you know, are we going to shame them because they've done something that that most of us feel is abhorrent or whatever? No, we're not going to shame them. At least we shouldn't because they made peace with that. That's, this is what their life is. You know what I'm saying? So oftentimes, you know, when we think about our legacy, you know, I, 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 everybody wants something that's going to be grand and and ostentatious, you know. That's going to, to sit down there and have folks talking very well and not going to have any scrutiny. But there are some things, honey, that, that may have that, that folks may find displeasing, distasteful, or whatever. That okay, you know, hey, it, it would be that. Let me take uh, um, Mayor Coleman Alexander Young. <laughs> okay, and what's the other child that was in Flint? What's his name? Eric somebody. What, what's the what's the council person that was in Flint, Michigan that everybody loved? Because he was cutting up, okay? Well, you know, Coleman Alexander Young, Mayor Coleman Alexander Young, okay, came into this, into this industry and he let the kids have it, okay? He came in, he was the Detroit's first black mayor and, you know, he went down as the person who stopped um, y'all call it the Red Dogs down here, where well, we had a similar program in Detroit called Stress. All right, and basically it was a racist program or whatever that that was targeting blacks and this that and the other that white racist cops and things were going out there and attacking blacks and beating them up in the alleys and all that kind of jazz and blah blah blah. And he got rid of that particular program. Okay, and carried on and carried on. But what he's also known for is cussing out the media because he made no secret honey he was just as <laughs> he was just as potty mouth as I am honey if not more that's the come I tell y'all honey I am a direct descendant of his tutelage that's why it you know um I'm getting a lot of people you know trying to trying to you know they they owe me like if, if I decide to run for mayor again you know uh, in the next four years, they're like, oh, well, you got to look out, honey. You know, you got to keep in mind this, that, and the other. And and one of the things that I, that I strike back with people is this. I hear you. And yes, I can clean up and, and you know, get my mouth in order together. But, but the thing I want y'all to understand is I'm always going to be myself. Okay. I'm always going to be me. You know, and take it or leave it. So when you talk about the legacy, Coleman Young, honey, we, everybody knew, child. That, okay, yes, you come for him, honey. He comes for you right back, honey. He got he got one thing that he's going to really be going to let you have it. Okay, especially when you come for him with something stupid and silly. You know, he's going to give it right back to you. So now, what is it about you? What is it that you want folks to say about you? in the next hundred years, okay? And in particular, College Park, let's talk about what we're doing here in the city. Okay, let, let's bring this on back home so that we can talk about what we're doing here in the city of College Park, okay? Have you done all that you can to build the city to make it what it is? You know, uh, have you done your part to be a contributing citizen? You know what I mean? What have you done that is going to keep us afloat? Okay. What are those things for you? You know, um, are you on the right side of history, if that makes sense? 
Okay, because oftentimes folks would come up and do some stuff and, you know, and, and would, would be on the wrong side of history because you're playing on the wrong team. You know, because you're trying to make a name for yourself or you get caught up in, you know, the everyday uh, mundane stuff and, uh, or, or, or thinking that because you did this and you did that and it's supposed to mean something. And then what you thought was you, you know, becoming this mogul, if you will, it becomes a negative reflection. So when I say you're on the wrong side of history, child, yeah, because now you, because you have tarnished a legacy, you know, tarnished it because now folks don't trust you, don't believe you. And if that's going to be your legacy, honey, then have stand by it, you know, stand by it. Let's look at those <laughs> who we knew were the liars and carrying on of the community. Y'all remember when we were kids, we had that one neighbor, every time, oh, that one somebody, or that one uncle, that one somebody, every time they opened up their mouth, you knew it was a damn lie. Okay. And, and, you know, you know you got that one friend to where every time they come by, you, you know not to trust them or whatever because you, you can't believe nothing that come out of their mouth. You know, every time you turn around, it's always something, you know. So what do you do? Okay, um, but here, when we talk about leaving our legacies, okay, if that's what your legacy is going to be, you know, when we come and, and pay homage to you at the funeral, the fume, uh -huh, okay, and things, at the repairs, you know, how many of y'all are going to have somebody come up and say, y'all know he wasn't shit? Y'all know she wasn't no goddamn good. Okay. Ain't no need of y'all lying, you know, trying to sit there and make something up. You know, don't have the past sit there trying to do a eulogy on something that wasn't true. Y'all know you want shit. Okay. Oh, let me slow down, honey. I'm not going to make that light. Yeah, I'm not going to make that one. Um. So, you know, when we talk about that, what do you want it to say? What do you want the people to know about you? Okay, what what is your work? What about your flaws? Can everybody talk about your flaws when they talk about your character flaws, you know? And say, you know, because I know I know one of mine, honey, that child always has somebody to live with, honey. She know how to live by herself and blah, 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 you know. You know, that, that's going to be one, one of them. Okay. Um, but what is it, you know? What what is it? They know I snore. They know I don't like to sleep in my bed a lot. I sleep sitting up all the damn time, child. I I do not use my CPAP machine the way that you. I have a BiPAP. Actually, I'm supposed to be getting another one, but um, yeah, I'll get on that in a minute. Uh, but when we talk about it, honey, what what does that look like? Okay, what what does that look like for you? What does it look like for? Uh, what do you want it to look like? How are you going to design your legacy? Okay, especially since we all into designing labels and carrying on and, you know, building a bear and shit. <laughs> okay, you want to build a bear, you know, and all that kind of jazz. What is it going to look like for you? What are you going to tell yourself? What are you going to, uh, what do you want to leave behind? Y'all know how we have those little capsules and you're talking about leaving a little time machine behind so you put all this little stuff in it to say this was the year 2024 and we get little stuff that was representing this and we put it and we dig it and whatever so somebody can find it later to say, oh my God, this is what they did and all that kind of stuff. So what is it that you want to be said about you? You know, have y'all ever taken the time to write out your accomplishments? Because it's one thing to sit down and say it, right? It's another thing when you write it down and get somebody to read it, you know? And it's very interesting because I had to do that for my mom, right? Because she asked me, uh, she was doing something and, you know, she needed a bio. And she wanted me to write it for her. And when you sit down and look at it, honey, it's like, damn. 
got through all of this, you know, because you don't realize how much you've done. You don't realize how much you've contributed. You don't realize how much, you, you know, you've done. And especially in such a short amount of time, you know, what does that smell? It smells like burning wood. Okay. Somebody got a fire going or something. It smells like burning wood over here. Um, but, you know, do we look at that? Do do we, uh, have you ever done that to, to where you could absolutely pat yourself on the back? Especially on the low moments when you don't think you've accomplished anything or you don't think that you've done enough or when you think that you're procrastinating because the stuff that you want to do, you know, is deferred or whatever because it's not done in the time that you think it was supposed to be done and carried on. And when you're looking at, the, uh, at somebody else's success and judging their success to yours or comparing it rather, and uh, you know you're trying to sit up there and, and look at and look at your, your your benchmarks and oh I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I didn't make it here I didn't make it there. Okay, when we're doing all of that, uh, are we able to uh, sit down and write out what you need? Okay, to say you know what, hey, this is what I've done. This is what we've done. This is what it looks like. This is my life. Okay, these are the things, and these are the things that I want to do, but this is what I've done. Okay, this is what I've done. Hot damn, you know. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Damn, I'm tired of the holder again. And it hasn't done that in a little piece of a minute. Okay. Um... But have you sat up there and said, you know, this is my life. This is what I've done. You know, now these are the things I want to do, but this is the thing. These are the things that I've done. Okay. And carrying on. Okay. Do you dream big? Okay. Are you a big dreamer? Okay. Well, how many of those dreams have come true? You know, you know, on my playlist, I, 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 I found the, the entire song to, um, uh, the Laverne and Shirley opening song, you know, that, 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 that uh, we're going to make it. Um, uh, I listen, I love listening to that because uh, Making Our Dreams Come True, that's the name of the song. I love listening to that because it inspires me, you know, uh, to want to go out there and, and, and tackle the world. You know, so when it's all said and done, and when I close my eyes for the final time, child, okay, for the final time on this side of creation, and when I wake up into our new ex my new expression of whatever life is, okay, uh, I want it to be said that I've done everything that I could to be the best person that I can be. Okay, now. I want to put a caveat on that because oftentimes we want it to look a certain way. We want it to be done this way, you know, because we want it to have this Dr. D. And oftentimes that may not be it, honey. You know, they always tell us, you know, you have to understand the assignment, right? That's the new little catchphrase. You know, you understood the assignment. And oftentimes, uh, Either we don't understand the assignment or we get sidetracked because we understand it, but we don't like folks in our business, or better yet, we don't like folks criticizing our assignments because it's a lot of times it's it's not glamorous, it's not the big to do, it's not the the the, 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 the assignment that says I'm supposed to be the one without the struggle. I'm supposed to be the one that you know. Uh, uh, is the, is the go-to when, when I have all of the money and I have all of the this and the foot, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the glamour, right? So I, I challenge you, College Park. I want us to, I want you to think about that, you know, because they always say life is too short. Honey, life is life, okay? Life is life. And one of the things that we do is we end up, I say in my first book, Awakenings, epiphanies along the spiritual journey. Uh, 
that if we make time our friend, we'll have all the time in the world that we need. And what do I mean by making time our friend? Oftentimes, we're so busy trying to race against time. We're so busy trying to make sure that we get so much done within the same 24 hours. Everybody who is alive, when you wake up, everybody have the same 24 hours, okay? The same 24 hours, okay? Now, depending on what time you go to bed and what time you get up, okay, you have the same 24 hours in a day, all right? But we're so busy trying to race against it. We're so busy utilizing it. And we're so busy trying to take advantage of it to where we don't sit back and accept the fact that it is what it is. You know, those who are very meticulous, very, 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 very meticulous about time and, and all of that. Uh, you know, we end up racing with it. You end up... You know, trying to find out how you can have 25 hours and, and eight days of the week. You know, because you're so busy trying to do so much with it. When we don't take time to to center ourselves, to get focused, to understand life, to understand that every part of us need to have some kind of something. Who the hell is that? Oh, you know, I keep forgetting this Halloween. This child is on the bike and he got this sword on his back. It looks like he has a sword of some sort. And that just, okay, he might be one of these little ninja turtle things. Uh, okay. It's still Halloween. Um, but, um, damn, he just tore up my dog. But nonetheless, child, we, we have to look at those things and we have to, we have to, have to, have to, have to take stock in, in, in making time our friend, okay? What don't get done, just don't get done, okay? We have to accept that, okay? Put it over onto the to-do list tomorrow. You got a checklist, write it out. Whatever don't get done today, okay, that, that's what goes on the list tomorrow, okay? All right, you know? And stop crying over spilt milk. Stop sitting up there worrying ourselves over something that is out of our control. Okay. And the stuff that you can control, okay. Whatever you didn't do, forgive yourself for it. Oh, that's real big. Forgive yourself for it. Oftentimes, we don't know how to do that. We stay mad at ourselves over some stupid, you know, uh, stupidness that carried on. And I'm, I'm right now, I'm in that same boat, honey. I, I, you know, did, made a move, honey, that I can't fault nobody for but myself, you know. But okay, we done did it now, so now what? We gotta make do with it, right? We gotta, we gotta get through it, okay, and make it happen. You know, we got to make the best of it because, okay, you put your stuff in it, it's your bed lying, and honey, if you don't like the sheets, then take them off and either wash them or buy some new ones. <laughs> okay. So how about that, right? So, uh, yeah, that, that's where I am today, honey. This is a thought right here. What do you want your legacy to be? And for those of us who are concentrating on the city of College Park, what, do you, what would you like to contribute to College Park's legacy? What are you doing to contribute to College Park's legacy? Okay, when we talk about the history of College Park, what are you doing to contribute to it? Okay, all of that, all of that, that's what we want to talk about, you know, what we want to consider, what we want to look into, yeah. That's my, those are my thoughts right now, child. I'm trying to get home. Y'all, where, tell me where I am. Y'all tell me where I am. Y'all know where I am. Okay, y'all know exactly where I am. Ain't just the doggone trail, the Phoenix Trail. What I say, the, okay. Y'all see all that darkness, honey, when you're okay. Now tell me where I am right now, honey. Tell me. Where am I? Where am I? There, T. Owen Smith. And best road, y'all see this darkness up in here. 
We need lights over here, children. We need lights. Oh, Lord. But all right. That there is that. Um, I'm going to bid you guys farewell because I'm turning now. I'm turning onto Sullivan Road. I'm coming off of Best. Turning onto Sullivan. And I'm about to turn into a Brocadero, honey. So thank you guys for joining me on this ride home. I got to stop at the mailbox and things and get my mail. I think I got uh, a Timu outfit in this damn mailbox, honey. Ha, ha, ha. My new Timu, honey. <laughs> yeah, we're able to, to do it. But yeah, we're here in College Park. Lovely, oh, lovely. Okay. Lovely, oh, lovely. All right. Lost my signal for a minute, but here, I'm going to let y'all go anyway here. I'm here at the mailbox. Let me get all this stuff together and then get over here to the house so I can get out of this monkey suit. I'll talk with y'all another time, child, okay? Ta-ta.